Charles Denton was a leader at UMass Boston for 30 years and is currently Executive Vice President for the Truffler Foundation. I'm proud to welcome on our show Dr. Charles Desmond. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with both of you today. Right. What was it like for you to growing up as one of the few black family in your area neighborhood? Well, um, as your notes will probably tell you, I grew up in Walden, Mass. Mm -hmm. And in Walden, uh, at the time that I grew up, there weren't, there weren't very many minority families. There were three minority families um, in the high school that I went. When I got to high school, there were three um, black students. And so it really wasn't um, that much of a big issue, only because we were so few minorities there, there was not really too much tension. How did your family react when you decided to go to college? And what was it like at um, college? Well, I was the first one in my family to... Um, to actually get to college. So um, it was a big, you know, I think everybody was encouraged by the fact that I was going to school. I thought it was great. And, um, you know, they were, you know, they encouraged me to go and, you know, try to do the best that I could do. And as you probably will get to, you know, it was a little bit difficult at first, but I finally got it together. Okay. What led you to drop out two years later? Um, I knew you were going to ask that question. <laughs> well, um, I think that when I first went to college, I wasn't ready for college. Um, I, you know, my brother kind of pushed me to do it. It wasn't a decision that I made on my own. I mean, he really felt that if I didn't do something, I was going to end up on the streets and in trouble and probably um, not going to be too much of a success in life. So he encouraged me to go. And um, so off I went. But as soon as I got there, I, you know, I, I was playing pool when I was younger. I used to play pool, yeah. and I could play pool, and I could, you know, win money, and that was, for me, that was the greatest thing about college at that time. So I didn't go to classes, I didn't study, and so the dean invited me in and said, I think you need to take a break, take some time off, and decide what you want to do with your life. And so that led me to uh, leaving school at that time. Describe your experience in the Vietnam War. How did like they, how did your family react when you went home? How did going to the war change your life? So off I went, and as I said, I arrived in the Tet Offensive of 68. Um, I was an infantry squad leader. Um, we ultimately got involved in a very, very intense major battle up on the DMZ, which was the demilitarized zone, northern part, the furthest north that you could go in the country wow. uh, to, in South Vietnam. So it abutted North Vietnam. So we were right on the DMZ for a major battle. Thousands of people died in that battle that I was involved in. Um, I was left for dead in, on the battlefield. Um, and that's when kind of really the greatest realization of my life came to me. I said, what am I doing here? How could this possibly have happened? What choices did I make that would result in my finding myself in a situation like the one that I was in, where I could possibly die on this battlefield? And that's what I thought was going to happen. So I said, um, you know, I was not a very religious person at that time, and I said, God, if I get out of here, I'll do something constructive with my life, and I'll try to, you know, do a little bit better with the latter part of my life than I did with the earlier part of my life. I was inspired to start Urban Scholars by a, a couple of issues. One was that, um, as you probably know, I originally came to UMass. I was the director of the Upward Bound program. And Upward Bound is somewhat like Urban Scholars, but not exactly like Urban Scholars, but it has a lot of the same features. Um, and what I realized, what I saw when I was with, with Upward Bound is that there were a lot of students that were in Upward Bound that just simply had a little bit more motivation, a little more focus, a little more desire for a real high quality education. And I said, you know, there really ought to be something that lets these students who are, who are, can work a little bit more independently and who can move a little more quickly through the university setting, that there ought to be a program that they could go to that would meet their needs. And so I talked with some people and um, came up with this idea of, a, of urban scholars. So you, when you started the program, um, were there people who told you that you couldn't do this, you couldn't start this program, that there weren't kids in urban schools that you couldn't find that weren't motivated, that they didn't want a higher education? What was your, the risk that you had to deal with when you started the program? Well, the interesting thing, I'm glad you asked that question because I would have probably forgotten that one little <laughs> comment. I did go to one of the schools that we were working with, which will remain nameless because it's really not relevant at this point. But I talked with um, one of the leaders of that school, and I said, you know, I really have this idea to recruit talented and gifted students at this school. 
and the teacher looked right at me like I'm looking at you right mm -hmm. now and said, there are no talented and gifted kids at this school. Mm -hmm. After these students got into an environment where they could really develop their intellectual thinking and focus their attention on you know, their own growth and development, they really transformed in, into different people. And he got to see students actually change. It becomes something different than what they were in a previous setting. And he became a very strong advocate and helped the program and introduced us to people and opened doors for us. And uh, it really helped the program in its early stages. Um, well, the biggest problem that you have with a program like Urban Scholars is that it costs money to run it. And so the thing is, is that um, if you believe in something, basically you just don't give up. That's just my, my basic lesson. If you believe in something and you think that this is a worthwhile effort and you think that it's doing something that needs to be done, the thing is you just don't give up. And if you don't have money, do it without money. <laughs> I mean, we did things, you can do things without money. I got volunteers. I still get volunteers, people to do things. And, um, you know, it's like talking with the two of you today. We found this photo of you. Oh, in, a, in yes. the first group of urban scars. Yes. Can you tell what was happening when this is taken, <laughs> this photo? This <laughs> picture here is taken in the family room at the John F. Kennedy Library, which is just across the harbor here. And the family room at the John F. Kennedy Library is the room that only members of the Kennedy family go to when they go to the library to do things. So it's a wow. very special place. It has all kind of historic archival materials from President Kennedy and his dad and his Bobby Kennedy and Edward Kennedy and um, the whole family's m materials are there and the one of, actually one of the murals on the wall was taken from the White House and they took it from the White House and moved it to the John F. Kennedy Library. So we all convened there with the first class, that I think there's 15 students, I, if I remember there were 15 <laughs> in the first class, and we just decided that we'd take this picture and that was going to be kind of the dream that JFK had. He really did have a dream that uh, our society was going to make opportunities for all young people. And we wanted to begin the program with an event at that room so that we could let everyone know that we thought that one of these days we'd be able to achieve some of the dreams that Kennedy had for the nation and for our young people in it. So that's the story of the picture. Well, Dr. Desmond, in conclusion, I'd like to thank you for your time and for coming here and talking to us. It's an honor to meet you and talk to you about your life and what you've done for this program. So, and um, I would also like to thank all of the other students involved in the interview and also who are in the program. Emanuela Villiard, Hugh Tong, Cecil Bennett, Anthony Bennett, and Delira Powell. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview and thank you. Yes, and let me add my thanks as well. <laughs> I think it's just wonderful that you all are doing this uh, for the 25th anniversary. I think it's a great way to memorialize a quarter century of work that's gone on and it especially makes me happy as someone who's involved in the program early on just to see you doing what you're doing today. 25 years ago, I wouldn't have imagined that we'd be in a studio doing a filming, being interviewed by two young people in the Urban Scholars Program. So that really does make me very happy and very proud. Thank you.